Hello, everyone. I thought I'd do a quick review of the mill exam that you took earlier this week. Question one, explain why utilitarianism is a form of consequentialism. Consequentialism is the wider, um, the, the, the wider group here. <clears throat> so consequentialism would be any moral theory that determined the value of an action based upon results or consequences. So utilitarianism is a form of consequentialism because it does that. Um, and crucially, it does that by uh, determining uh, or paying attention to the results or, or impacts on human happiness, on, on welfare, whether an action uh, promotes happiness slash pleasure or unhappiness slash pain. So consequentialism says, you know, any, 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 any result is, is, is what we're looking at, but utilitarianism is well the particular result of the uh, impact on happiness. So utilitarianism is a form of consequentialism because it is interested or determines the value of an action based upon the consequences for human happiness. Question two, explain why utilitarianism is a form of hedon hedonism because it defines or Mill's utilitarianism defines uh, happiness as pleasure. That's pretty much it. Um, that is, Mill has said that happiness is the only thing that is intrinsically desirable, intrinsically valuable. And he said that happiness is pleasure. So he said that the only thing that's intrinsically desirable or pleasurable is just pleasure. Um, intrinsically desirable or valuable is pleasure. So uh, anything that defines the point of life to be pleasure, which is what utilitarianism done is a form of hedonism. Question three, what is the greatest happiness principle, principle of utility? I really kind of just meant you to put, you know, put it down there in your own words because it's so important or in whatever form. Uh, an action is good uh, in proportion to its impact in furthering human happiness or an action is good insofar as it furthers human happiness bad insofar as it uh, diminishes human happiness or promotes unhappiness something like that just just something i think pretty much everybody got it it's just just something to lay out the sense of it question four how does mill respond to the objection that to say that pleasure is a sum and bone of the greatest good is degrading to human nature. Uh, to say that pleasure is the good, that is that which we are always seeking and that which determines you know, our happiness and determines whether a life is a good life. To say that it's pleasure to some ears may seem degrading because it may seem to put us on the level of the animals to say we just live for pleasure like a pig. Um, but much of his point in chapter two is to say that that's to ignore the fact that human beings are capable of a wider range of pleasures than pigs or any animal other animals are uh, and that uh, a human being would never be satisfied with the pleasures of an animal they have to have the human pleasures which include the so-called higher pleasures of the intellect. <clears throat> I think he even says the intellect and moral life. So it's not degrading to human nature if we take into account that there are more than the physical pleasures that are needed to satisfy a human being. Uh, question five, Mill claims that the higher pleasures are more pleasurable and more desirable than the lower ones. What does he say is the proof of this? It's in preference. That is, the preference of those who experience both the higher and lower pleasures for the higher pleasures. He says, he claims that, uh, without really any proof, but he claims that anybody who's experienced both will invariably say that the higher pleasures, pleasures of the intellect, pleasures of feeling, uh, are more intrinsically pleasurable and more desirable than the lower ones. So it's, it's, it's an entirely in preference, the, the proof. And question six, what does Mill say is the ultimate sanction of the greatest happiness principle? Well, the ultimate sanction is a subjective feeling. That is, the ultimate sanction is the internal sanction that <clears throat> I care about 
the greater happiness. I care about uh, the happiness of others, and therefore, uh, in my actions, I try to further that happiness, the happiness of others, and that ultimately, I have to care, and that's a subjective feeling, and that is uh, something that's either there or that's not, but can be encouraged. So the ultimate sanction is an internal sanction of subjective feeling. But there are, of course, the external sanctions, too, of social disapproval and things like that.